What we really talk about when it comes to African spirituality is the toll that it takes on our mental health. The belief system that we have inherited is rife with pervasive trauma and it leads many people to wanting to avoid anything to do with African spirituality in its entirety. I want to understand the impact of spirituality on our mental health and how it affects the way in which we build our relationship with our beliefs. To get insight from an actual expert on this topic, I went to speak to Vela Maseko. Not only is she an experienced clinical psychologist, she is also a Sangoma. And I'm hoping that this conversation will delve deep into the complexities of the relationship of mind and spirit. There seems to be a lot of people struggling with mental health, mm -hmm. especially now with the lockdown and all of those things. So I wanted to understand that relationship between um, spirituality and mental health. But mm -hmm. I came to you because you are a clinical psychologist mm -hmm. and you are a Sangom mm -hmm. and you are a Christian. I'm not sure. Are you? <laughs> how, how, yeah, but I, I still go to church. Yeah. Yes. How do you how do you balance? How did you get to balance that? Like, because I'm assuming that you were like all of us. You were Christian from the time you were young, mm. because this was our default. Yes. Yes. You know. Yes. And then becoming a clinical psychologist was a conscious decision mm. that you made. Mm. And then becoming a sangoma is you were chosen. Mm, mm. You know, how did you, how did it come about mm. that, you know, you, your calling and the fact that you were on this direction of wanting to be a psychologist, which is a science, right? Mm. Psychology is a kind of a science. It deals with facts almost, whereas yes. spirituality is totally, not totally, but it's almost intangible, mm. you know. Mm. It, 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 it doesn't, well, the Western world doesn't see it as a science, but how did you marry those two? Yeah. Um, marrying them as a person, so you've asked me quite a number of questions. Yes. <laughs> so, so let me first respond to uh, how I got to become a Sangoma and, and a clinical psychologist. Okay. So, so how I see it, what if from birth I was a Sangoma. I was born in Istanbul. Um, and maybe I was called to serve as a Sangoma later on in my life. But I was a Sangoma before I was even conceived. I've always been. Always been a healer. Um, so when I when I grew up in a Christian Christian family, in a very religious family, by the way. If you know in Gonzo by the band to church of Christ. Mm. <laughs> so I grew up in the family, uh, we observed the Sabbath. So completely removed from from an African way of life. 
So, but when I look back, I think even as a child, I knew who I was. Um, and I know that when I look at the type of questions that I, I, I asked and, and stuff that I used to do when I was playing alone, mm. stuff that I knew about the world without being told. And one of those questions that I used to ask, and this was before I even started school, was um, asking my siblings, what, uh, what if, what if everything that we're doing is not necessary? What if God does not care hmm. whether we, we, we observe a certain day of the week? Hmm. And I said, what if when we die, then we realize what the, all of this didn't matter? Mm. So it was one of those deep existential questions that I used to ask. Then, and, and often adults would say, because this is one of the things that I enjoyed doing, speaking to adults, having conversations with them. And, and people used to say, hey, this one is a strange child, you know? And... And some people would respond to the questions that I asked. And and again, I know I've always been a Sangoma because the dreams that I held later on in life, Uma mm-hmm. For me, I thought it was normal. I, I, I thought it was normal to always dream about natural spaces, to to, to, to dream about the four elements and being um, chased by the wind, for example, I thought it was normal. Mm. I knew it was one of the nightmares that I used to have as a child and dreaming about the clouds or the sky is very close to earth. Mm. And, and, and also experiences of knowing that I have a connection with the moon because I remember one day walking to school early. It was early, I must have been about past six in the morning, mm. and it was a full moon. And and seeing the moon as if it's very close to me and being scared, mm. you know? But also having a sense of what I'm being guided by the moon. The moon is watching me, and I was going to walk, I was walking a very long distance for a child, and I was going to pass three forests. And also another experience was um, the fear of water. And then one day I got lost and I found myself close to a dam and I froze. And I know I knew there was something in there looking at me. Mm -hmm. And I was scared. Mm. And these are things that I didn't share with other people, but I knew this with my experiences as a child. Mm. I mean, from school going age, primary school, mm. age six mm. to nine, and these experiences are intense. Mm. But anyway, society socializes you, and then you're, supposed, you're not supposed to think certain things, you're not supposed to ask certain things, you're not, you're not supposed, like con- sending messages to people telepathically was something that I did. And I thought it was fun. <laughs> like, ah, I can make them... Th- <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then you are told, ah, 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 this is demonic. You must stop doing that. Then you stop. And then I grew up, then I learned about this psychology. The first time I knew about psychology, when I was growing up in Mabopane, no mm. TV, nothing. And mm. I don't know how I got to learn about... Oh, is psychology it was from a piece of paper and mm. you're reading about psychology because I loved reading I knew I wanted to be this thing mm. <laughs> and 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 even um, meditation it was again from a piece of in, in magazine or some an old magazine for that matter mm. and I said I know this I do this thing because <laughs> this is how I thought for me, it was prayer, and I thought mm. I even told my mom one day, "I don't pray like you guys. I don't recite a prayer. I sit down and I talk to God, mm. 
in my heart. Mm. I ask him questions and he answers me. Because they say prayer and um, meditation is like listening. Yeah. And and you see, I did not know this was meditation, but I said this is how I pray. Mm. I sit down and I speak to God mm. and I listen and then he answers me. So it was inborn. Then later on I grew up and said, "Oh, okay, this thing is called medication meditation, but I was doing it, you see." And that is why and my and 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 I don't think of us unique in that sense. Mm. I think children are born knowing who they are. And through socialization, they are forced to forget who they are. Mm. So all of this information gets stored in your subconscious or even the unconscious eventually mm. because you're repressing it. Mm. Yeah. So I think I didn't repress all these things successfully mm. because then they would imagine my dreams and sometimes when I'm think seeing I'm sitting alone then I would think about these things and I would imagine myself doing certain things. Like as a child people used to say I was lazy in the family and so so seven that it's me now so seven some chill parts in kulume and people would say and here you are yeah what what kind of a job is that i'm doing exactly that yeah. i sit down and i speak i have mm. conversations with people that's all i do every day mm. sure so then you 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 started studying then i go to university mm. Then I'm drawn to psychology. Mm. Then I studied psychology. And then I start to and I love psychology because it made sense to me in many ways. It explained my view of the world to a certain extent. Mm. But the more I studied it, then I realized something was missing. <laughs> you know? Mm. Then then I went to vets I'm doing my clinical psychology and then my spirit awakened again. So now instead of li- only reading um absorbing information mentally everything becomes experiential. Mm-hmm. I hear with my entire body. Mm-hmm. So I'll be sitting in class and if a lecturer mentions something or I'm reading an article and I know it I know it in my bones that this is correct. Mm. This is right. And this is how certain theorists in psychology made sense to me. Mm. And and if something does not resonate with me, mm. I would experience it intensely. Yeah. You know? And, and and then that's when I realized that I hear not only with my ears <laughs> you know mm. I hear with other parts of my body mm. and I see with my eyes closed mm. then the deepest question was what is the mind where is the mind became my subject of interest mm-hmm. where is it located it still is mm. so and your other question was was how do i balance yes. the three mm. it's happening on its own it's evolving on its own like when i started i saw myself i also had a conflict about um Christianity my religion how i used to understand god and 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 moon to human beings so and one of my deepest pains when makuvuka i i idlos that is when i was doing my internship and i remember weeping almost every day and my pain came from all the everything that i knew about god about myself I was losing it mm. i didn't even have secondly i didn't have the language to explain my own experiences mm. i didn't have words mm. to name my own experiences and, or even my visions and say okay ngiphuphe nge 
one, two, three, or I dreamt about. It was always, I saw this thing, I experienced this thing. So language was very limited in explaining my own experiences or just to make sense of my experiences. Mm. Mm. And thirdly was what I was going through was so painful, so confusing. And I kept on saying, no woman should go through this. Mm. No woman. And simply because a woman has a lot of responsibilities. Mm. I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a, I'm a sister, I'm a wife. I'm supposed to provide for people. And I couldn't. Because mm. sometimes I would wake up in the morning somewhat paralyzed, couldn't move. And you're looking at your children. They're expecting mommy to drive them to school and I can't do that. You can't even articulate why. Mm -mm. I'm an intern, I'm doing research in, in psychology. I can't, I can't think. I can't, I can't, I couldn't write a sentence after seeing a patient and write clinical notes because words sometimes escape me. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. And one minute you are sick, the next minute you are fine. What do you say to a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Couldn't seek help? can't tell people because it doesn't make sense. Mm. I get lost in the same area that I've lived in for a good three years. I get lost. Drop of kids at school, going back, I don't know how to go back to the flat. Instead of going to Park Town, I find myself in Emerentia. Yeah. Emerentia Dam for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I was just trying to show you how difficult it mm. was. Very confusing. Mm. I was confused. Mm. Um, but I survived. I survived. I pulled through. Gave birth. Like I was telling you that I felt I and the following week I conceived a child. Mm. So I'm also pregnant. So I gave birth and, and, and eventually I, I completed my studies. Mm. And the conflict between Christianity and, and, and African beliefs, mm. it's a space that I continue to, 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 to revisit and clarify it for myself. Mm -hmm. And every time I do that, I find what there's no conflict mm. in the essence of the beliefs or the philosophy. Mm. There's no conflict. It's the same thing. It's, it's interesting when you say that um, part of the process of you coming to terms with your spiritual path was painful. There's a very disturbing link between African spirituality and trauma. Mm. Right? Um, the idea of, of, of embracing your ancestors to general people to us it sounds traumatic mm. um for people who are who have a calling mm. seem very traumatic mm. traumatized rather yeah right you know your tuatha is traumatic mm -hmm. first i want to understand how does that trauma impact on how we evaluate our experiences mm. Because it, I, I can't, I think a lot of people struggle with that aspect of trauma. And this is why a lot of people try to stay away. Mm. Because all we hear is, you know, even if Ungayotwasa, there's always this essence, this messaging that, you know, abapanti, bakwadile, you know, they're angry, they're going to mm. punish you, there's, you know. So I'm, I'm concerned as to how does that trauma 
impact how we form a relationship with our beliefs? Should it be traumatic? I don't think so. Mm. Lately, I've come to a conclusion. Utuktuasa, by its very nature, is a natural process. And I'm not talking about going to a person and having all the rituals done and the formal training. Mm. And I'm talking about Utuktuasa as a, as a, as a a process of spiritual awakening, mm. getting to know, coming to knowing yourself mm. as you essentially are. Mm. What makes it traumatic is the lies that we are told growing up. Mm. It's the fear that is instilled in us. A fear of yourself. Mm. You know, a fear of yourself as an African. Let me just put it that way. Because mm -hmm. the irreligion itself tells you what your people's way of life is demonic. Mm -hmm. And if you do these things, you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's also a fear of punishment. So when you come face to face with your ancestors, it's like, what did I do? Did I cross a line that I was not supposed to cross? Mm -hmm. So I'm now in hell. Mm. Is that why I'm meeting these people? Mm. You know? Mm. So there's, there's, there's a deep fear of, of ourselves and deep hatred for who we are. And I experienced that hatred. And, and the pain, why it was difficult for me, is because I was struggling to accept myself for who I am. I'm dreaming of myself. Um, I'm like... I cannot be Sangoma. It cannot be. Even when I was hearing drums, mm. um, and this is an experience I had in, here with, in another space here, um, they call it what? Personal transformation. It was a workshop. And then, and I heard drums and I heard music. I heard people singing and clapping hands mm. when I was in a trance. And my reaction was of fear. What is happening to me? What did I do that made me come into contact with these beings? My ancestors, for that matter. And I'm saying these beings who are practicing um, demonic um, stuff. Mm. You know? So there's guilt, there's fear, there's self-blame. That's what makes this journey painful. So you resist Right? You're mm -hmm. resisting. So then, from what you're saying, the trauma is not a result of what is happening. To you. To you. As a person. Yeah. It, it is a result of your internal conflict in interpreting what is happening. In interpreting what is happening. Mm -hmm. Because in other religions, people seek this. People seek what comes to us naturally. Mm. People go, you know, they, they meditate, they do all sorts of things to open their subconscious. Mm. And it comes to us naturally. For us, it's a normal way of development. Mm. At some point in your life, something opens up. Mm. Without you doing anything, it comes to you. Mm. Because also what, what I've realized happens a lot is that by the time a person turns to African beliefs or African spirituality, they are at their lowest. Yeah. It is the absolute last resort. Mm. And they come with, like, we come with this deep desperation. Yeah. And what I've also noticed is that it's not a desperation for a new way of life. It is a desperation to escape something. Yes. I'm trying to get out of the situation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to live according to how God mm. intended. I'm saying there's this particular situation that I want to get out of. And, and we spend our lives running from ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that is how I can sum up my life. I spent many years running from myself. And, and I got to a point where I could not run anymore. 
because it felt like I was losing my mind. Mm. So you're not running from your calling, you're running from yourself. You're running from yourself. You're running from yourself. You are a healer. You are born a healer. Mm. You're not running from Amazuzi who are located out there, who, who, who are out to get you, who, are, who have decided at some point that they want to give you gifts. Mm. <laughs> You know, mm. or who, who have chosen you so that they can mess up your life because you are a high flyer and you have forgotten about that. That is my analysis, at least. Mm. And I know I differ with other people. Let's say. Mm. Yeah. Mm. My experience of Amadlozi were not only Amadlozi who are located somewhere outside mm. of me. They are in me. Mm. Their knowledge is in me. Their mm. knowledge is here, in mm. me. Their experiences are my experiences. Mm. I remember what they did as if I was there mm. in that lifetime. Mm. I am them. They are me. Mm. But what about people who are not called to be healers? Because I think even those who basically want to live a peaceful life, want to turn to African spirituality, but now nah, they're not sure how to navigate it because I think I'm worried that a lot of the mm. time when we speak of African spirituality, we almost automatically seem to be talking about Isango. Isango. I'm not talking about Isango. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about Isango. I'm saying, you may have said I don't think I'm unique. Mm -hmm. I think it's in all of us. It's just that when you discover who you are, mm. right? You will discover this, the path is one, mm. <laughs> the same path. Mm. So when I walked that path, when my soul opened up, I discovered then which I was a healer. Mm. But you might discover certain things about yourself. Mm. You will discover your talents. You will discover your purpose for coming here on earth mm. Mm. and another thing that seemed to occur like a reoccurring theme with african spirituality is the idea of generational trauma yes yeah is 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 there an equivalent of that from a psychological perspective is there such a thing as generational trauma yeah there is Mm -hmm. There is, and it's explained in different ways, mm -hmm. right? But the bottom line is that you are inheriting trauma, whether genetically, mm -hmm. you know, in other schools of thought, um, like the union psychology will speak about the, co the collective unconscious. Mm -hmm. So what your ancestors went through, you will tap into it mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. right? So there is a generational trauma. And if you think about... A chaos that has happened here in Africa. Mm. The wars, oppression, how people were, were brutally killed, everything that our forefathers went through. Mm -hmm. We carry it. We carry it in our bodies. In the same way that I was saying, with my ancestors' experiences and my experiences, good or bad. And they will come to me through dreams or visions mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you get to a, you just have a sense of knowing something. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. You go to a place, you know for sure you've been here before. <laughs> mm -hmm. It happened to me when I went to, because I grew up here in Joburg. I The first time I went to the Eastern Cape, mm -hmm. um, I remember there was a place I went to and there was a mountain that had mist on it. Mm. And there was a small house standing by itself, mm -hmm. you know. And something felt deeply familiar. It, it, it felt deeply familiar. And every time I see images of those Eastern Cape Mountains and the mist, I, just, I literally feel it somewhere in my chest every time I see those, those images. Um, there's a calm that, 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 that comes over me and sometimes I use those images as part of my meditation. 
mm. um, because it's something that I cannot explain, and it's it has to be those particular that particular place. It can't be those mountains somewhere in America no. or whatever. It has to be in that particular place. So now, keeping within this idea of a generational trauma, where do you think we are as a generation? Like, is there something that we are going through collectively mm. as a, as as a generation? There is something that we are going through collectively. Mm. And it answers the question, why are so many people being called today? Mm. Mm. So we're going through this collectively. Mm. And for me, it then disputes the idea of only special people are called. Mm. Yes, if, if you are a healer, you will be called to become a healer, right? Mm. By the way, there's many types of healers. Even music, musicians are healers. Mm. Artists are healers. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So we are all awakening to ourselves. We are all awakening to the God within us. Mm. Sure. For for men for centuries maybe one or two centuries, Africans started buying into the idea of God who is in heaven, right? Mm. And that idea does not sit well with our children, mm. even those who are not af- uh, um, um, exposed to African spirituality. Mm. There's a resistance to it. There's a sense of knowing it can't be true. Mm. So yes, we're going through that. And with the issue of generational trauma, we are people in pain, collectively. Mm. We are in so much pain. Sometimes I joke about it, and I tell you black people are funny. When we cry, we cry differently, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever noticed Shais baby twan? We go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we cry. The pain is what lay is deep. Mm. But if you ask a person, most of the time they don't know where it comes from. So we're carrying this deep seated pain. And sometimes it comes out when you least expect it. Mm. And you find yourself weeping. You're weeping for what? You don't know. At funerals, we cry painfully, man. Mm. It's black people. Mm. I remember the first time I encountered a person on our muscles. It was actually a friend of mine um, around 2012, 2013. Mm. And at that time, I didn't know what a trance is. Mm. I didn't know. I have heard of our muscles. Mm. Right. I didn't know how they actually work. Um, and so a friend of mine went into trance. And the one thing that always stuck with me, the memory that stuck with me of that moment was the cry. The wailing. I remember oh. telling her afterwards, I'm like, it sounded like a hundred people were crying for a thousand years. It, it was like the most profound cry. It's like... A human being can't cry like that. No. What are you crying? And at that time, I'm sure she was, what, mid-twenties or so, mm. you know. And like, it, it, you can't cry like that. Yeah. You, 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 there's nothing in this world that you have gone through that <laughs> would make a person cry like that. Because mm. even the sound, I remember how the room vibrated mm-hmm. with, with her cry. It was, it wasn't even a loud cry. It was just deep mourning yeah like a deep deep loss mm. that she had gone through and how i knew that this was into zawantabadala was it when she came out of it she was like hey how are you <laughs> how have you been i'm like no <laughs> no who was that no you can't you i'm like you can't do that yeah you can't do that yeah. like she literally got up and she was sweating she was because i was like hey how are you I haven't seen you in a long time how are mm. you like, what just happened? She's mm. like, I, I don't remember. What did you see? Mm. And I'm like, no, what do you mean you don't remember? You were, mm. you were here. Like, when I come out, I don't remember part yes, of it. Yeah. You know? 
and that's when i realized that for me where potentially some of this trauma is but also there's something that i'm not sure if i'm imagining or not but it seems to affect women differently mm. I, I don't know why because also there's a lot more women being called mm. than men and i'm not sure if it's a historical aspect of it has always been women or if the generations of women that have come before are trying to recall themselves yeah you uh, you could be right mm-hmm. and and maybe all the statements that in fact i think all of them are correct mm-hmm. but also i mean i wonder if men are suppressing what women are freely allowing themselves to experience and express mm-hmm. what do they do with this pain do they experience do they express it uh, through violence mm-hmm. you know so then what you're saying is 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 quite intense because what it could possibly mean is that the reason for the rising in gender based violence mm-hmm. could very much intrinsically be linked to yeah. our spirituality as men and yes. the extent to which we are suppressing it yes and nothing at ya bola yes it's rotting mm. and it it's turning into something else it is turning into something else cuz sure. pain has has a tendency to do that you can internalize it or externalize it mm. if you internalize it it will lead to self destruction right mm-hmm. if it is not acknowledged and processed and dealt with mm. properly mm. if you externalize it then you attack other people you place your fears your pain in others and then you attack mm. the other mm. when 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 i had this conversation a similar conversation conversation with ukoko obri i asked him this question as to why is it that both black men and women went through trauma mm. yet black women have handled it differently yes and black men have handled it differently. Yeah. What because you know we I can say as a man or a descendant of men and say that you know my forefathers went through apartheid they went through mm. this they went through that but my grandmothers also went through it. They did. Yeah. You know, my my great grandmothers went through the same thing. Yet they they held up our community despite what it is that they were going through. So w- is it a, a inherently spiritual thing that women handled it better or is it a physiological thing that women I don't even want to say they handled it better but, but, but they handled it but if you if you think about the fact that or consider the fact that in all of us there's 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 the feminine and the masculine energy mm-hmm. in all of mm-hmm. us so what is there in men is there in women mm-hmm. but through is socialization um people who have female bodies <laughs> let me just mm-hmm. call it that way mm-hmm. yeah, right because we're not our bodies mm-hmm. we we assigned certain roles mm-hmm. and we're told to we'll say you you will not go and be mm-hmm. only males will go and mm. be you you see mm-hmm. so we we were we were socialized we were groomed in a particular way mm. so those who, who were sent out to fight learned to channel their their pain and anger that way through violence through violence and if i'm told that i it is wrong for me to fight to get into fights as a woman it's 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 not right right mm-hmm. i am forced to find other ways to deal with my pain and anger 
I'm forced to because I'm told you cannot fight. You should not, mm. right? I'm sure then women over the years nurtured that part of themselves. Because for me, it seems like in society, over the evolution of men, we, we sort of disconnected from ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. When I came face to face with my own masculinity, I thought something was wrong with me. Mm. You know? I thought it's something that needed to be corrected. But luckily when that happened to me, I was already a student in psychology, so I, I packed it, I observed it. And I worked mm. through it until my masculinity and my femininity were aligned. This is this is a strange question. Do you think that this generation of women are embracing their masculinity subconsciously more? Yes. And this is why there's I suppose a feminist movement and women sort of as they say embracing your strengths yes mm -hmm. and and men too some men too are they but remember we were not at the at the same level of of evolving spiritually some are aware of it some are not aware of it and 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 this is not something that I've read or thought clearly through, but it's just a thought that comes to my mind sometimes. Mm -hmm. What uh, could it then lead to when you start experiencing your femininity as a man? Could it lead to oh, to 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 a conflict or a crisis about your sexuality? I wonder about it. Hmm. It, it. It's actually an interesting question to ask. A, what does a man who embraces both his aspects look like? Yes. Yes. What does he do? Yes. How does he view himself? And 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 a woman, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just say, how does a person? who embraces um, both energies look like? How does she or he choose to express himself or herself in the world? Mm. Because then it also throws out the idea of gender roles. It does. Or does it? Like, gender roles are man-made, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm literally imagining it now. You know, mm. like how would a family even of a man and a woman who are balanced in their energies? Yes. Even, you know, because there's no, you know, I'm the man of the house. No. Or it could be I'm the man of the house. It, I'm not. It doesn't mean that. There's a higher. I'm superior. One. Yeah, I am the man in the yes, house. In the not house, the man yes. of yeah. the house. Yeah, I am the man in the house, and I can choose to play certain roles, mm. depending on my abilities. Maybe, not simply because I have male genitals. Mm. Yeah. Sure, and and as you were saying, I think for they will come across or come up the question of sexual orientation yes where i suppose a man then won't understand what does it mean to embrace your feminine because mm. if thinking that if i say i'm embracing my feminine it means that i want to be a woman or yeah and and that's why i call it a crisis so sexual identity crisis mm. And how that person will resolve that, it's, yeah, because it I'm always be different. I'm sensing that the way in which 
these cases of gender-based violence come across when you really think about it it's it's not crime you know because i was i was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about the difference between gender-based violence and normal violence um and because we were talking about how men the, the number of men who get killed is much higher than the number of women who, who get killed and but i was like the reason for it is the biggest factor yeah you know when if i walk down the street and i i get mugged it's because the person wanted it's something from me, whatever. you know what i mean mm. but with women there's this desire to destroy by the way that also happens to women sometimes a person attacks a woman simply to yes. take yeah yeah positions and yeah. even then they leave you. yeah Mm. Because with with us, I fear walking down the street. Mm. I fear high. I don't fear anything at home. Mm. You know, whereas with women, the, their danger is more pervasive. But also these crimes of you know the mutilations, the mm. the, the little children. It's it it's like it's not normal. And I know that you know sometimes they say it's patriarchy, you know, whatever. I come from the school of patriarchy. Mm. They don't teach us that. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. They they. they This is this is something much more deeper It's that deeper. a person is trying to assert It's like the man is trying to assert himself in a very profoundly disturbing way mm. you know it's like you're almost trying to go past the woman's body you're going trying to get mm-hmm. right to her soul mm. in the thing that mm. you're trying to do wow. and so I'm thinking that it, as we we're talking that it could be that we as men are going through something collectively mm. as much as we as a generation are going through, as black people yes you know i'm thinking as i'm saying this i'm thinking that we as men are going through something we are feeling challenged mm. in what way oh okay yeah. no we're still fine all right <laughs> <laughs> mm. um in that it feels that we we need to keep reasserting our 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 masculinity because somehow we feel like it's fading yeah maybe at a subconscious level mm-hmm. that is what other people are dealing with mm-hmm. i'm not sure if others are consciously aware mm-hmm. of the crisis that they're going through mm-hmm. as men mm-hmm. you know then if it's in the subconscious only then it's more dangerous eh? because the possibility to to unpack it and deal with it and resolve it is very limited mm-hmm. yeah. and, and it brings me back to one of the, uh, the original questions that i asked in that when when a person is going through or is in a spiritual journey mm. is it pos- how, is it possible for them to differentiate that this is a mental issue that i need to challenge or a past trauma that i need to engage with mm. or this is a calling this is part of the yeah. calling you know you know what the symptoms are so similar mm. you know the symptoms of someone who has a lot of um, mental conditions Um, the symptoms again if you compare them with the symptoms of mental of illusion of the symptoms are so similar so for it DSM-5 which which is this diagnostic tool in like psychiatry mm. it, it, it it's easier to use it because then you can eliminate so what see this is not um schizophrenia because mm-hmm. this person is presenting with 1 2 3 but doesn't have 4 5 6 and 7 mm-hmm. right and the common symptoms are depressive symptoms and anxiety symptoms mm-hmm. and it depression that you experience when your spirit or your soul awakens The depression there is, is so deep it's very deep and it's painful but you see the main difference what 
I'm a symptoms that a person or to say experiences what makes them different from a, a psychiatric condition is that those symptoms are very transient mm-hmm. a person can be severely depressed today but wake up tomorrow feeling okay mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. a, a person can become just once a person might look like they've lost their mind completely they're saying things you know they're not making sense you know they're making um the these sentences are not complete so you're looking crazy basically mm-hmm. and it never happens again so you can never say this person is schizophrenic because it only happened once once in their lives and it only lasted 5 minutes <laughs> mm. or even less mm. you know so the symptoms are so similar but there are ways of of differentiating what has a from the symptoms from psychiatric conditions mm-hmm. and also the dream content the content of visions you can see you can tell if someone is seeing stuff that is buried in the subconscious or the unconscious mm. and and something that does not emanate just from fears for example mm, mm. i mean i mean we we are in constant fear for our for our lives mm on a daily basis for example and hallucinations for someone who is mentally disturbed um hallucinations would be about what is happening mm. now mm. yeah it actually brings an interesting point in that we live in the world of social media mm. right we spend hours and hours and hours mm. right and from my understanding from the little that I know about psychology is that the things we engage with on a daily sort mm. of get imprinted mm, in, in 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 our mind so and in terms of specifically for the in african spirituality in that we are exposed to so much more content about it mm-hmm. and i'm trying to figure out to what extent does that sort of manifest in our subconscious in mm. that we 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 are dreaming about people we see online we're mm. dreaming about people we saw on tv mm. you know mm. and i think and a lot of people are, like, are then confused they mm. get confused like and then they would say you know i had this dream about you i had this dream about that person and they can't differentiate that am i dreaming about this because i had an interest in it or i've been thinking about it or am i dreaming about it because there's something deep i have yes yeah no it's it's a factor and i appreciate the fact that we're speaking about african spirituality in social media on tv and even this podcast mm. however i'm also aware of the fact that then people who have not yet and i keep using the word your soul opens up like who have not developed spiritually to a certain point mm-hmm. where the, their subconscious opens up where they can tap into the collective unconscious if i can use the word mm-hmm. the land of amazons mm-hmm. because this is where the collective unconscious mm-hmm. is, who are not already there they will know about these things and because they will and then they will think this is their own experience because mm-hmm. they will start dreaming about them because they've had me talk about mm-hmm. it right mm-hmm. so there's that as well mm-hmm. and and i know we tend to criticize our, our forefathers for keeping a lot of things secret mm-hmm. even when natimasi masi epehlweni thina masithwasiswa we we were told but you don't talk about these things nabantu mm. abangathwasanga right mm. 
and 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 we we are criticizing that and say but how are our people going to know about our own spirituality but i'm be- also beginning to appreciate the fact that there was done so that when you start experiencing it you know it is your own experience Mm-hmm. You didn't read about it some way. You didn't hear about it some way. It's your genuine experience. Mm. And for me this is what helped me for sure. This is what made me know for sure what I am not crazy. I know that my experiences are authentic. Mm. I cuz I I kept saying how do I know the things that I know? because I've never experienced them in this lifetime. Mm. I've never seen them anywhere. I've never heard anyone speak about these things, but I've dreamt about them. I've seen them in my visions. How do I know that? Mm. And and then the answer would be, "Okay. Therefore, I have access to my forefathers experiences mm. exactly like your experience when you went to the eastern cape mm. you knew you've been there before mm. even though in this lifetime you had not been there mm. so you experiences from your forefathers were transferred to you mm. how it's another question mm. for another day yeah but their experiences are you you can tap into their own mm. ex- into their experiences so then that means we as this digital people consuming digital media so much have to be more discerning in our experiences mm. in if in our dreams we have to question more yeah i was like, like dreaming about a lion amanti what 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 that does not make you isangoma mm. it's normal mm. it's normal because in african philosophy we are um, interconnected dreaming about those things that not necessarily mean you have to go with your thoughts mm. there's more that you need to experience that will prove to you what you are being called now mm. oh. okay that's it mm. thank you so much yeah yeah bonga When I started this podcast it was to bring into being a promise that I had made to myself in my approach to spirituality which is to never follow anything or anyone blindly to interrogate whatever information that I am given I also am promised to interrogate myself as well to interrogate my experiences my perceptions and also my understanding of things this conversation with Ukoko Vela is one of those that i had always hoped to have but i needed a certain foundation first before i could have them one of the things that has stuck with me in this conversation and in personal conversations that i've had with other people is that in many of us there is something that is pushing us in our spiritual path there is something that we are trying to resolve something that we are trying to alleviate or something that we are trying to come to terms with there is one particular thing that we carry that we are trying to remedy in some way be it an incident or be it a situation but it is a memory of some kind that we carry deep down inside us and maybe even subconsciously so that we are struggling with i believe that it is from this particular thing that 
many of the complexities of our perception of our lives come from outside of the ancestral obligations of African spirituality. For some of us, it is something that we have built not only our views of life, but we have built our identities around this thing. Or it is something that we use to understand and evaluate our experiences, a kind of filter. So now what we do is that we say to someone or a healer that I had this dream about water or I had a dream about an old woman giving me beads or I had a dream about an old man giving me a white cloth. And we hope that in resolving this particular dream, we will indirectly resolve this thing that we can't even bring ourselves to put into words. I mean, it is easier to say that I had a dream that I was underwater than to say, I am hurt. To say that I am angry. To say that I am ashamed. And to be specific in saying that I am hurt by this particular situation or I am angry about this particular incident or I am ashamed about this particular issue. Our desire is that if I say that I am embracing my ancestors or I am embracing African spirituality, then it must come with some kind of resolution to this particular thing that I am carrying inside me then when things do not get resolved in the way we expect it to or in the time frame that we expected, then we just say these things don't work. This, I believe, is when we then interpret what happens during our spiritual journey as trauma. I am not in any way saying that trauma does not exist or horrible things do not happen to people. What I am saying is that there is another dimension to how we perceive certain things. I believe that once you confront this particular thing that you carry, once you engage it openly and honestly, then your dreams become that much clearer. Your path is filled with less confusion your ancestors' communication becomes that much clearer too because you are not looking through things through a filter. A filter of whatever is being communicated to me better be a quick solution to this thing that I have. Otherwise, I am not hearing anything. I hope that in whatever way that you can, you can sit with your particular thing your particular suitcase, as it were, and to open it and unpack it. I'm hoping that you will find someone who will help you to do that. Who knows, you might find that you have been carrying the answers that you have been looking for all along. My name is Vusum Zinlande. Thank you so much for joining me on episode 10 of The Journey Guantu. I hope that you have learned something and I hope that it has helped you in some way. I wish you light, I wish you courage, and I wish you all the best on your journey. Magwandi.